I'll be speaking a little bit about hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So it is a spectrum of malformations and there is significant underdevelopment of left ventricle and LVOT which causes decreased systemic cardiac output. The incidence is almost 0.1 to 0.2 per thousand live births with little male preponderance. So normally in this light diagram we can see that the cavity of the left ventricle is very small and there is very thinning out of the left ventricle outflow tract. This is present in two main forms. In one form there is atresia of both mitral and aortic valve with practically no communication between uh, left atrium and left ventricle and nearly absent or severe hypoplastic left ventricle. In the second form, there is visible left ventricle which has hyperechoic walls. It is globular in shape and shows poor contractility in association with severe stenosis or atresia of aortic valve. It is a sequelae of critical aortic stenosis. So in ultrasound, what we see in the four chamber, in the first form, we will see small hypokinetic left ventricle which shows decreased contraction and this is better appreciated on M mode. Typically, the apex is formed by the right ventricle, which is a very important point of this disease. There is minimal or no flow through mitral valve. LA is small in size and flap of foramen ovale, we will see it showing to and fro movement between left atrium and right atrium. And typically, the pulmonary vein has findings. And because the pulmonary vein flow is uh, directed into the left atrium, but it cannot go through the mitral valve, so it goes either to the right atrium or reverses back in the pulmonary veins. So the pulmonary vein will show reversal of flow. In pulse Doppler, uh, we can see the there is characteristic and diastolic pronounced A wave reversal, which is due to increased LA pressure. But this might be absent in case of wide foramen ovale. In the second form, there is dilated globular left ventricle with ecogenic walls due to fibroelastosis and this also shows decreased contractility. It is like this because this is a, a sequelae of aortic stenosis which later develops into critical aortic stenosis and then there is no forward flow. And LA may be dilated due to presence of mitral regurgitation. So in 5 chamber view or the LVOT view, there is absent or narrow ascending aorta and flow across LVOT is not visible. In 3 vessel and 3 vessel trachea view, we can see dilated pulmonary artery which is a compensatory mechanism and non-visible or hypoplastic transverse arches there and the typical finding is that there is reversal flow in the transverse arch. So HLHS can be diagnosed in first trimester also where we can see that uh, instead of two parallel flows, we will be able to see only flow through the right heart. But if there is a normal heart in the first trimester, it doesn't mean that it cannot develop later into HLHS. So it can also be seen later, even if it is normal in the first trimester. So there is chromosomal abnormality associated in 4-5% to of cases and majority are Turner, trisomy 13 and 18. And some of the syndromes may be associated, which are known as smith lemley opis syndrome and Holteram. And extra cardiac anomalies can be seen in 10 to 25% of cases. And there can be growth restriction due to decreased cardiac output. So coming to some of the images, in this we can see that there is dilated right atrium, right ventricle, whereas the left ventricle is very small in size. And typically if we see that the apex is formed by the right ventricle. And, and in the diastole, we can see that a tricuspid valve is opening, but there is no opening of the mitral valve. It is thickened and echogenic. Uh, in the color flow, the finding can be confirmed that there is no forward flow through the mitral valve. And in the three vessel trachea view, we can see dilated pulmonary artery and a very narrow transverse arch which shows reversal of flow. This is another case where we can see an almost absent left ventricle which is just not visible and dilated right ventricle and right atrium. And another point here is that the stomach is on the opposite side. So this is a case of situs ambiguous as well. 
and this we can see in the color flow as well that there is univentricular flow only. If you look at this heart, the four chamber doesn't look that grossly abnormal. But if we look carefully, then we can see one thing that the left ventricle is not showing contraction. There is only rocking movement of the left ventricle. The wall is ecogenic and the apex is formed by the right ventricle. And if we look at the tricuspid valve, there is good movement of the tricuspid valve which is visible but hardly any movement in the mitral valve. And the finding can be confirmed in the uh, color flow where we can see good flow in the right heart but no forward flow through the mitral valve and we can see a small regurgitant jet through the mitral valve. And in the TUI, we can see all the findings together where there is forward flow in the right ventricle and reversal in the transverse arch. So this was a case of a second form. And another similar kind of case where left ventricle is very small in size with very thick and echogenic walls. And in color flow, we can see flow through the right heart, but no flow through the left. And apex is formed by the right ventricle. And uh, dilated pulmonary artery and reversal can be seen in the transverse arch. And in this, we can see prominent pulmonary veins and no forward flow through the mitral valve. It has a very poor prognosis because of very underdevelopment of left ventricle and LVOT. If aorta is thread-like, then there is no hope for the surgery. If aortic caliber is more than 2 mm, surgery can be recommended. However, still there is 55% survival at the end of first year. So it has to be differentiated with some other anomalies such as coarctation of aorta, critical aortic stenosis, mitral atresia with VSD, unbalanced AVSD, DORV and CCTGA. So presenting some of the cases, here you can see that the left ventricle is very small in size and the mitral valve is thick and echogenic and we do not see any opening of the flap, whereas the right heart is grossly dilated and some arrhythmia is also noted. The flap of the foramen ovale is opening into the right atrium and no forward flow is seen in the color Doppler through the left heart. And in this particular case, both the outflows were arising from the right ventricle. So this was a case of mitral atresia with DORP. In this case, we can see that the, there is thick and echogenic mitral valve, whereas tricuspid valve looked normal. Of course, on uh, Cine, we can see uh, good movement in the right ventricle, but almost no movement in the mitral valve. And on this color Doppler, we could see flow through the right heart. So this was a case of mitral atresia with VSD. The size of left ventricle was due to presence of VSD and it was getting flow through the right ventricle. In this case also, we can see a large VSD present here. Right heart is dilated, whereas left heart is quite small in size. And we can see the tricuspid valve is opening normally, but no opening of the mitral valve is visible. And on color flow, we can see flow through the right heart, but no flow through the left heart. And here also the left ventricle is getting uh, flow from the right ventricle through VSD. And in the three vessel trachea view, we can see dilated pulmonary artery, very narrow transverse arch, but there is no reversal. So this is a case of mitral atresia with coarctation of aorta. Thank you so much.